results pretty immediately but like after like 30 or 60 days you're gonna be like what is life my pores are so much smaller my pores are cute my pores are tiny hello hello guys and dolls it's me Cora and welcome to the very first skincare Sunday every Sunday from here until it's not fun anymore or I felt like like I've covered everything or maybe I started a new series. I don't know. For at least the next few months, every Sunday I'm going to be sharing with you a new skincare video. So they're going to be about different things. Today's video is going to be about my daytime or my, my morning routine. I'm going to have my video next week about my nighttime routine. The video after that will be focused on dupes or alternative products. So I'm going to kind of share both my routines and then I'll share, you know, within those categories of the routine, what are some great dupes for high-end skincare as well as just alternatives or things that are, you know, in the same kind of price range or, you know, you know, you know what I mean. I'm going to have Mikey make a video for us about beard care because obviously as a human with a beard, he knows a lot more about that than I do. I do also want to mention that my nails are severely chipped right now. Uh, I am currently out, completely out of nail polish remover. How does that even happen? I want to say before we get started with today's video and, and just kind of like a like a blanket for this whole series. This is all skincare from my perspective, but my advice is somewhat based on science because I'm kind of a nerd for this stuff and I've studied it a lot and I look up and, and, and I, um, I follow a lot of skincare experts and, you know, while I'm not a dermatologist and I'm not a, a chemist or anything, I do pay very close attention to the ingredients that are in my products and I also look for the most active things I can use because I don't want to waste a bunch of money on skincare and that is really what made me want to make this series is that there's so much crap being sold to the consumer. I'm very passionate about skincare and I think that it's so important to really educate people about proper skincare because it's it's like this thing. It's kind of intimidating. And most of the time when you're going to buy skincare, um, if, if you're buying anything even remotely high-end, there's a salesperson who's trying to sell you something. So they they Occasionally you'll run into someone who genuinely cares, but for the most part, they're just like trying to get their goal met, you know? Unfortunately, a lot of skincare companies, even the ones that have good products, tend to have like really overinflated claims. And so there's a, a general mistrust in skincare, I believe. 90% of what is out there is just like an expensive jar of goo. And that's not to say that we should just throw our hands in the air because there's nothing effective and we should all just wash our face with Dove soap. And by the way, let, oh God, that's like a whole thing. I wanna say, <laughs> science be damned, sometimes something just works. And if just washing your face with Dove soap and putting on a little olive oil is enough for your skin, you are so lucky. But for most of us, we need a routine with specific ingredients targeted for our skin concerns. I wanted to kind of make this to educate people who don't know very much about skincare or just to kind of get nerdy with, with those of us who do really love skincare. I'm gonna have a couple of resources in the description box down below. My advice is based on things that are proven, that have worked for me as a person, that have worked for other skincare experts, things that have been proven scientifically to work or clinically even to work. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the actual routine and everything. First and foremost, a little info about my skin. My skin used to be very oily. It used to be very clogged. It used to be very oily and dry at the same time. Whereas now I feel like overall it's more normalized and more balanced. It is still acne prone, so that is still a concern for me. Um, I actually have an active zit here and I had one here. Fun times, amazing. So I am going to show you a couple things that I do to help to prevent acne. I also try to not be super aggressive with acne treatments just because for me personally, I found in the past when I was doing that, I would actually get more acne because it was just irritating the shit out of my skin basically. First thing I do when I wake up actually is drink water because I'm thirsty when I wake up, but drinking water is so important for your skin and I actually want to thank Trisha Lee for giving me a little lecture about water when I met her a couple months ago. Her skin was, is fantastic in person. I was like, shut up. <laughs> and she told me she drinks a lot of water and I was like, you know what, that's that's a routine step I can get on board with. Let's get to the actual routine. So the first step for me is cleansing my face. Of course, it is super important to wash your face in the morning. I've heard so many people tell me that they don't wash their face in the morning and I'm sorry I'm just gonna be blunt ew I understand your face doesn't feel oily it doesn't feel gross but you have your nighttime skin routine still on your face you have dead skin cells that have shed throughout the night 
you have sweat from sleeping and rubbing all up on your pillow no dude it's time to wash your face plus your hair has like touched your face all night dude wash your face but i understand the desire to not have anything too drying and i also want to mention that you shouldn't be using any cleanser that's drying like at all if you have a super foaming face wash and your skin is dry you've got to stop using that dude anything that foams has a lot of sulfates in it and those just really dry and strip your skin and the the oil that naturally occurs in your skin is good for it, it can actually stop you from having oil, over oily skin and i'm not saying that if you switch cleansers your skin type is going to magically change um but you you want to avoid using anything too foamy or too drying. And if you're using any kind of facial wash that leaves your face feeling dry or tight, it is too, too much cleansing, essentially. <laughs> um, your face should not feel tight after cleansing. It should feel normal and balanced. If you are washing your face and it feels tight or dry afterwards, Basically what's happening is that there's micro cracks in your skin and bacteria can get in there which can cause acne. It also breaks down collagen and over time it's going to give you crepey texture and wrinkles. And we don't want any of that. One that I found that I really like, I got the recommendation for this from Stephanie Nicole in her skincare routine, is the Nude Perfect Cleanse. This is something I had never heard of anything like this before. I think her video was the first time I'd ever heard of anything like this. And I was like, what? That sounds so cool. So this is a cleanser that you use dry. You, you put it on your dry face and it comes out as like, like a thick gel. Nude skincare used to be sold at Sephora, but they discontinued the line. So I was very fortunate and I actually got this at like a discounted price for like 26 bucks. So I bought a couple of tubes of it. Uh, I think you can still get this through the Nude website. The, the line itself hasn't been discontinued. It's just not going to be sold at Sephora anymore. But I do have a dupe for you guys. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like stave off sharing dupes for every part of the routine. Otherwise, this video would be 500 hours long. Uh, but I am going to talk about more dupes in an upcoming dupes video, so look out for that. But I do want to tell you guys about this one today. This is the Skin by Sonia Kashuk Dissolve. This is the same gel to oil uh, makeup removing cleanser. The ingredients on these are different. They're not at, at like, a, you know, an ingredient for ingredient dupe. But they are very, very, very close. They feel the same. They work the same. The only no difference I really notice is that this one is ever so slightly less, like, my skin feels ever so slightly drier after using this versus this, but in neither one of these actually leave my skin feeling dry. I have acne prone skin and these don't break me out. Um, in fact, actually I find that when I use just this one, my skin does better. So this is what I'm going to use today. So I'm going to get some of that out. I just do like a line like this. Oh, and it smells good. And I don't believe there's actually fragrance added. It's just the, you know, the product itself, whatever the ingredients are, just smell nice. Uh, and this is also paraben free, which is fantastic. So I get that on my fingers, right? And then you put it on your face, as you know, dry. And so at first it just feels like a really thick lotion or something. And as your skin warms it up and you warm it up from mashing it around, it starts to feel a little bit like an oil. Fans of coconut oil for cleansing, you could use that as well. So the next step for this cleanser is to actually get your hands wet with some like warm water and it's going to turn into a milk. I'll be right back. Okay, so my hands are wet. I don't know if you guys can really see, but you can see a little bit on my jawline. It creates like a, like a cleansing milk kind of cool. There's two options with removal for this. You can actually rinse it off your face if you'd like, or you could take a, like a washcloth. This is a really soft one I got on Amazon, also from Stephanie Nicole's recommendation. I'll have that link in, I'll have these linked in the description bar down below. They're microfiber, so keep that in mind. If you have any kind of a microfiber sensitivity, you might not want to use them. I like that they have this like little satin outside. It makes them feel a little more luxurious. And they also have this little hook, so they're great for hanging up to dry. It's very important to mention that you need to change this every single day. So I use this once morning and night and then I put it in the laundry basket. One of the things I also really like about using microfiber is that it dries really quickly so I can hang it up overnight and it's dry and then in the morning I can toss it in the bin. So I wipe this off my face. I found that when I was using drier cleansers because my skin was oilier and you can see it's kind of turning pink from like the edges of my hair and stuff. That's a hazard of dyeing your hair. <laughs> when I was using a drier or like more foaming cleanser, I was actually breaking out more 
Whereas using this, my skin feels overall more balanced, so I feel like I don't break out as often. And then I just kind of go over my face with my hands to make sure that I've gotten all the cleanser off. For some cleansers, you know, using a towel like this would not be enough to remove it, but it totally works with this. Most importantly, you need to dry your face after that. And I know some people like to let their face just air dry. When you let your face air dry, there's something called tr like transdermal moisture loss or something like that. Basically, as the water evaporates from the surface of your skin, it also will evaporate from within your skin. So you want to actually dry the surface moisture. So the next step in my routine is acid toning. And I know it sounds scary, but I promise you it's not. If toners make you think of like the 1980s or 90s and like scary Clinique counters and Seabreeze astringent and stuff, you're not alone. Um, for a long time, I avoided toner as well because I felt like, oh my god, I don't do anything, do anything crazy. Uh, then I discovered a few toners that worked for me that were very mild. In the last few months, I've tried to be a little bit more proactive and a little bit more proactive skincare. That's not a plug for them. Um, I just tried to be a little bit more aggressive about my skincare because I want to maintain what I've got. I think it's pretty good at this point and I would like to continue to have good skin. Goal of a good toner is to correct the skin's pH. That's like for any toner that is the purpose of it. There are toners out there that just do that but there are a lot of toners out there that actually have AHA or BHA acid in them. And that's kind of the star ingredient and one that I'm going to focus on today. So why do you need this? Go ahead and do me a favor and touch your face you're touching dead skin cells. Those dead skin cells make your skin look dull and tired. They're little greedy buggers that are sucking up all your good skincare and so that the healthy cells underneath are not properly absorbing your skincare. So you want to get rid of them as best you can to make sure that all of the products that we put on after are going to properly absorb. Now you're going to be asking me why can't I just use a facial scrub? Physical exfoliants and scrubs and things are generally speaking pretty bad for your skin. You can use them every once in a while, but it needs to be seen as like a treatment rather than a daily thing. I know so many people that use like a scrub on their face every single day. And I mean, I get it. When you use a face scrub, it feels nice. Your skin feels exfoliated. It feels soft. Um, and so I understand why people like to use them. But so what you're doing is you're causing, again, micro cuts in the skin. It's like taking a nail file to your skin. That's l like, I'm not being, I'm not being cheeky here. That's what you're doing. An acid toner is a chemical exfoliant and it's gonna help the skin help itself. It's going to make it easier for the skin to do its natural process and it's going to speed it up because as we age, the natural cell turnover slows down, which is why we need exfoliation in the first place. So there's two types of chemical exfoliants. There's AHA or alpha hydroxy acid, and then there's BHA, which is beta hydroxy acid. So alpha hydroxy acid, ah, <laughs> alpha hydroxy acid works on the skin's surface and what it does is it weakens the bonds of the dead skin cells. It gets in there and it's like nom 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 and, and breaks up the things that hold the dead skin cells on your face. It won't do that to healthy cells, it'll only do it to dead cells. Um, although, it, well, it can if you use it too aggressively. If you use it properly, use it in, you know, the right concentration. AHAs also help to smooth lines, reduce pore size. They do all kinds of really great stuff for your skin that I just can't cover in this one video. I'm going to be doing further videos where I break down each step of the routine so we can talk about it a little bit more in depth. The results pretty immediately, but like after like 30 or 60 days, you're going to be like, what is life? My pores are so much smaller my pores are cute my pores are tiny it made such a huge impact on my skin and i'm like passionately suggesting that you try it there's a lot of different types of alpha hydroxy acids out there so there's so many to choose from the most important thing is that it's at the right ph and the right concentration and really the ph balance of it is in some ways more important than the concentration because you can have like a concentration of 30 percent but if it's not at the right ph level it's not going to have the correct chemical exfoliation whereas you can have something like this which is a five percent and it's at the right ph so this is actually quite quite exfoliating, really great stuff. Uh, this is from Pixie. This is the Glow Tonic. This is my personal favorite. Very, very quickly, I just want to also cover BHA liquid. Now, this is not something I use every day. Um, BHAs work within the pore itself. So this one works on the surface, right? Works on the, you know, the very top layer. BHA works within the pore. It, it sort of normalizes the shape of the pore. It thins out oil. It also helps to accelerate skin turnover. 
Some people notice that when they use BHA, it breaks them out at first, and I urge you to at least stick with it for at least a month or two because what's happening is there's like a purging process and basically it's just bringing everything out that would have eventually happened anyway, but it's sort of like pushing everything to the front so it sort of happens all at once. Once you get through that, it's good. It's very good. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is you don't necessarily have to use, in my opinion, BHA every day. I use it a couple times a week. I don't use it every day. I do use my glycolic every day, twice a day. So I grab a facial cotton. Mine is from Shiseido. You can get less expensive ones from, from Daiso for like a buck. Um, put it on your hand like this. You don't have to do that again. You can hold it any old way you want. One thing I do want to mention is you don't want to use a cotton ball because a cotton ball is going to soak up a lot more of your product and not release it as much. Whereas any kind of cotton pad, whether it be like, you know, the little cheapy round ones or it be something fancy like this, it doesn't matter as long as it's thin because then it won't absorb as much water. Pad And I start with my forehead on this. Just put it all over and I even put it all over my eyelids and underneath my eyes. You don't want to actually get it in the eye, but a lot of toners will say not safe for the eye area and they have to put that legally. But why would you not use something that is so effective on your eyelid skin? It doesn't burn or anything. In fact, this one doesn't even really have a sting. I've used a couple other glycolic products that are pretty effective. Like they are, they're much stronger and they definitely have a like a little bit of a sting when you put them on. Whereas this one, I feel like when I first started using it, I felt a little bit more of a sting, not an alcohol sting, and there's no alcohol in this, to be to be completely clear. But with your glycolic acid, you wanna give it a couple minutes to do its thing. So I usually will take this time, check an email, get on Instagram, go make myself a cup of coffee, whatever. But I give it at least five minutes to settle in. So I mentioned transdermal moisture loss when I was talking about my cleansing routine, but I also want to mention something else. The water really helps things permeate the skin. When you have something super active like this glycolic toner, you'll actually, it'll be more active if there's water on your face and you don't want that. You don't want it to be more active than what it's intended to be. So that's another reason why you want to really dry your face. Now this next step in my routine is adding water back on. Um, which kind of could seem counterintuitive. What you've done is you've given this a chance to be active for about five minutes on its own. You're like, okay, do your thing, buddy. The next step that I'm going to put on is a is a water mist. This is Fix Plus from MAC. It's actually quite brilliant. It's an oldie but goodie. There are so many water and flower mists out there. And I used to think that this step was unnecessary. And in some ways it might be for some people, especially if you have oilier skin. If you have drier skin, this is such a great way to kind of set you up for success for the next couple of products you're going to put on. There are tons of these on the market. And when I get around to making a video specifically about these, or even in my dupes video, I'm going to have a little bit more information. I've used this now for like 10 years for various different things. I also use it for like wedding eyeshadow and things like that. So it's it's good for a lot of things. Some people use this as a setting spray. I don't think it actually works all that great as a setting spray. So that's just my personal opinion. In terms of the benefits of this, this one contains glycerin, which is a humectant. It's going to help to draw moisture into the skin and protect the skin itself. It also has caffeine and a little bit of cucumber extract in it. Um, those are kind of like the star ingredients anyway, other than that, it's mostly water. This also smells really good, so it's a nice little luxurious part of my skincare routine. So I'm just going to spray my piece with this. And I let it mostly dry before I start doing the next step. Now, this next thing is something I don't always use. This is the Ultra Repair Hydrating Serum from First Aid Beauty. Now, if you don't want to do a flower mist, but you want something that's going to help to draw moisture into the skin, something like this is really great. This is a water-like serum. This one has some really great vitamins in it. It is a humectant. It's going to draw moisture into the skin. Well, on days when I'm just going to the gym, I will occasionally put this on with my sunscreen to add a little extra moisture, just depending on what my skin needs. Um, so I'm just going to use this today because I already have it out and why not? So I'm going to put this in places where my skin tends to be a little bit drier. It's like under the eyes a little bit. You'll notice that I don't use an eye cream in my routine. You'll notice that by the end of this. Um, nah, it's, it's, there's multiple reasons for that. The main reason is that most eye creams are, it's just marketing. You could just use a regular moisturizer under your eyes that addresses that particular skin concern and you're going to save like 
a bajillion dollars. Next step of my routine is vitamin C and I, I use different treatments different times of the day. In the nighttime I use retinol, in the daytime I use vitamin C. You can use vitamin C twice a day. It is like a rock star of skincare. Vitamin C tends to be a fickle ingredient so most of the products that contain vitamin C, the companies that create them and the ones that make effective good vitamin C products put a lot into it and it's an expensive ingredient so vitamin C serums are expensive. This one is very expensive. These these are tiny, right? Well, they're samples. They're not the full size product. So this full size product is 115 bucks. Yeah. Shop at Sephora. You know that their rewards program kind of blows. I'm not gonna lie. I so much prefer Ulta where you get cash. But with that said, occasionally they have a really fantastic sample. And in this case, this is the Alginus Genius Ultimate Anti Aging Vitamin C Serum. I tried this out and I also tried the Drunk Elephant and while I liked the Drunk Elephant Vitamin C and I actually think that in some ways it was more effective than this, the smell of it smelled like metal to me. It was really grossing me out so I couldn't continue to use it even though, I mean, I might go back to it because it was so effective. This is actually quite good. It has algae extract, it has niacinamide or ni niacinamide? I'm probably totally butchering the pronunciation of that. It has peptides and ceramides. So those all do all kinds of super amazing, great skincare stuff. For humectants, they are antioxidants. They help to repair damaged skin cells. Vitamin C itself helps to brighten the skin, tighten the skin. Um, I believe it actually helps with collagen production as well. Don't quote me on that. It just it does like so many different things. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on my face now. So... Oh, I think this sample might be dead. Damn it. I don't know how many pumps you would need from the full-size product because I have, you know, the sample one and hardly any comes out. But I use about that much. And I just put it all over my face. And this does smell good. I believe fragrance has been added to this, which is kind of a bummer. That's what I'm using for now. I may... I may end up changing up my vitamin C stuff. There's so many great products on the market that it's kind of nice to be able to try some stuff. The other treatment thing would be benzoyl peroxide. I actually have a little zitty poo right now, so I'm going to go ahead and stick that on there and on here. This helps to dry them out, and it also helps to kill bacteria. I'm going to give my vitamin C and my acne treatment a little bit of time to settle in before I go ahead and put on the next step. The next step in my skincare routine is oils. And while I do have, like, or I had actually, I used to have very oily and congested and yet dry skin. Now my skin is a little bit more normalized and balanced. Uh, so that's another thing I want to kind of impress upon you. I'm not saying that like if you change your skincare routine, you're not going to have oily skin anymore. But a lot of times when you do have your skin in better balance, it is less oily and putting oils on your face won't feel as gross. Um, with that said, from all my years of having oilier skin, I really hate the feel like heavy oil on the face. It's super gross. There are a lot of beneficial reasons to use a facial oil. They help to moisturize and seal everything in. Depending on the oil that you're using, they have great antioxidants. They have peptides, hydrating abilities. They have, you know, and this one has omega-3, 6, 7, and 9. What happened? No 8? Um, so there's just, and there's so many different oils on the market that I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a future video. Um, but this is one that I personally love. This is the Fresh Seaberry Moisturizing Face Oil. This stuff smells incredible, I'm not going to lie. I believe it's the roseberry or something in it that makes it smell so good. I don't know. Uh, I also really love the bottle for this. The top little bit here has like a silicone like rim so it really stops the oil from getting everywhere and Sunday Riley if you could incorporate something like that in your packaging that'd be great because that one's a hot mess. I go ahead and put this on the tips of my fingers very carefully because I don't want to, it to get everywhere and kind of spilled a little bit. Oh great cool wonderful. So I kind of mash this in between my fingers and then put this on my face. You don't need to rub oil to make it warm I mean if you want to do that knock yourself out but it's not necessary. So what I do is I sort of pat it all over at first to get it well distributed and then I'll work it into the skin. And this stuff, oh my gosh, you guys, <laughs> this stuff makes my face freaking glow, especially if you have dry skin. This gives your skin such an amazing, beautiful glow. And using the glycolic and using the vitamin C is going to do that for you as well. But when you have dry skin, sometimes you just, it still looks dull no matter what you've done. It helps to lubricate the skin, it makes it hydrated, and it's actually going to help your moisturizer to suck in a little bit better as well. 
Okay, so the next and really kind of the final step in my skincare routine itself is moisturizer and sunscreen. Now, some people like to use a separate sunscreen and moisturizer, and that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And if I'm going to be using like a hardcore, like super high SPF sunscreen because I'm going to be out in the sun all day, that's what I will do. A really great moisturizer sunscreen combo that I absolutely love, and it's from the drugstore, is the CeraVe AM. I've been talking about this stuff for years. It freaking rocks. It doesn't feel oily on the skin, but it is hydrating. If you have very oily skin, you may or may not like this. Um, and for dry skin, it might not be super hydrating. But again, if you've done all these other steps in your routine, you've applied your oil, um, you've done all these other steps, this is enough. This this could be enough for you. The only thing for me that I'm kind of like thinking about changing it up with this is that this contains a lot of chemical sunscreen, which I don't love. I actually prefer physical sunscreen. So lately I've been using the Ultra Repair Pure Mineral Sunscreen from Fab First Aid Beauty. So what I use is I'll usually use it with a separate moisturizer, which is the CeraVe PM. So one of the reasons why I love these so much is that they don't contain fragrance or anything weird in them. The sort of rock star ingredients of these are niacinamide, ceramides, and hyaluronic acid. So they're super hydrating. They help to repair and maintain the skin's lipid barrier, which is basically the fat in your skin that stops all the good stuff from getting out um, and helps like protect your skin from external like, you know, things, the air, and it, you need it. Today I'm going to use the CeraVe AM because I'm just trying to use it up. When you're using sunscreen, you want to make sure you're using enough, kiddos, so don't skimp. So again, I sort of press it into my face all over and then work it in. You might have noticed that I use whatever I'm using on my face and my neck as well. Don't ignore your neck, ladies. You'll be sorry. You'll be sorry later. Now, some people with oilier skin uh, prefer to use like a mattifying sunscreen. I, for me personally, I find that sometimes those actually feel heavier on my skin, just for me personally. Also occasionally, like they feel like thick. Um, the other thing that I have noticed is that sometimes they are like overly mattifying and then whatever foundation I put on top looks really weird and patchy. But if you so, get to this stage and you're like, my face is too oily, I want to sort of calm down some of that shine before I put on my makeup. Um, this is the Skin Rescue Oil-Free Mattifying Gel from First Aid Beauty. Now, mattifying is not, it's not what I would call it. It's like more like normalizing. It makes your skin less shiny but not completely matte. It's not hardcore and it doesn't make your makeup look weird. This stuff's actually really kind of boss. Um, so this is sort of a step for me that's sort of in between skincare and makeup. They have any major like skincare benefits. It's more about just how it makes your skin appear but I'm telling you it makes my skin look fabulous. So go ahead and again mash it between the fingers and distribute it throughout the face and then blend it in. I love the way this stuff makes my skin feel. So you might see that my skin has a little bit more of like a satin-like texture now. It's still shiny. I mean, I have all this stuff on my skin. And really, the shine and glow on your skin makes you look youthful and dewy and healthy. That is my routine. I hope that this is helpful for you guys. I just went ahead and put on a little Vaseline lip balm, um, which is what I've been using lately. I have very dry lips, which are very prone to cracking. And with all the lipstick swatching that I do and everything, it's very important for me to actually use something that protects them. You know, I know that this is a lot more information than you might have wanted to ever know. And generally speaking, like this, this video is going to be long, but this routine is quite quick. You're like, boom, ba boom, ba boom. Thank you guys for watching. And let me know if you're excited about skincare Sundays. Let me know what things you want to see in this series and everything like that in the comment section down below. And that's it. Have a great day. I'll see you in my next video. Remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful. See you. Bye.